Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to be talking about Amy Klobuchar and her uh, just recently announced um, plan for dealing with drug abuse in America. All right. So one, I thought it was really interesting. I just read an article on uh, a new plan that Amy Klobuchar has specifically to deal with uh, opioid, um, with the opioid epidemic and drug abuse at the macro level in the United States of America. So one, before I go any further, I think this is really cool that Amy Klobuchar is pulling this out and is highlighting it as a policy and saying this is a serious issue for our nation. I have thought about it deeply. This is a policy plan that is specifically targeted at fixing this problem. All that's good, right? So at, at, at the lowest level, this is good that she's highlighting it. I also am very impressed with Amy Klobuchar as uh, as far as coming forward and making this statement of, I, I'm still here, right? And, uh, and also really shaping her brand. Uh, she is shaping her brand to be kind of like, I am a, a heartland person and I am a no nonsense, honest person. And I'm going to make, I'm going to be the eat your vegetables candidate, right? Like nobody wants to hear what I have to say, but this is the right path and I'm willing to say it. And, and I'm the responsible person in the room. I thought that that that's a bold statement, like owning that, right? I think it's going to be very hard. It, it's already proving very hard to sell. Um, it, it's not certain who's going to be attracted to that, right? As far as it's certainly not the media. And, um, and I think it's going to be hard. I actually think there's many Americans who will. I think about 10 or 20 per percent of Americans will definitely understand what she's throwing down. But it, it's going to be a hard road to, to the finish. I think Amy Klobuchar is going to have a, a, a tough time. Now, the thing is, we're in the election race. Anything can happen. There, keep, there can be a moment, right? Uh, the world keeps moving forward. And these candidates keep moving forward. And as long as these candidates are in the mix, right? There's a possibility that can something can happen that can shine a spotlight on them just long enough for for them to punch through the ceiling of obscurity, right? And I, I think that's really where Amy Klobuchar is coming. Now, let's talk about her policy, all right? So she has this policy for dealing with drug abuse in America. And so first of all, it is... Uh, She's going to put in place some things that are uh, would stop doctor shopping, where people just bounce from doctor to doctor, to looking for someone who's going to prescribe, uh, um, I think, pain relievers, uh, basically opioids. Um, and so, essentially, she's putting into she's going to put in uh, processes that will stop that. She also is um, is talking about drugs as far as a, a take back policy, basically. Uh, if you end up with more with more prescription pills than you need, a lot of people don't know what to do with that, right? That that's actually a pretty good idea. Like basically, if you end up with more prescription uh, pills than you need, that's a strange thing for people because the doctors already told them, listen, this, these are so hard to get. If if I don't prescribe this to you, I've had this happen just from dentists, right? Like uh, basically, you go in and well, you know what? Here's the thing. It, it, because these things are so controlled, right? Basically, if you get more than you need legally, it's hard as a person to know what to do with them. And so having a program in place where you can easily get rid of prescription pills that are unneeded, right? That there's a safe method for, for handling it. That, that seems like a pretty good idea. Um, the other thing is she wants to create more beds for addiction treatment centers, and she wants to give... Uh, money to uh, to the National Health Institutes for research, right? So, uh, so basically, yeah. So, what does what does that all? Oh, one last thing. Um, essentially, the the dollar number that she's attaching this is a hundred billion dollars, which is it's not a small amount, right? That that's a significant amount. She's you know, and it's a real number. It's not a, a budget breaking number. It's a number that seems quite reasonable to attach to this problem. So I think all that is good, right? But the reality is overall, I'm very unimpressed with this plan. And the reason why is it's it's fundamentally unsound in my opinion, because all it really does is address symptom, right? We have a problem, right? You, when you have a problem, you have to identify, you have to do root cause. You have to determine what is the root cause of this problem, 
right? Then you have to identify a fix. You have to put that, that fix into place to be tested, right? Like to, to be tried at a low, at a, at a pilot level. Say, can we make this work in a single city, right? Once it's proven out in a single city or even in a single state, right? You bring it to the national level, right? And then you are applying a fix to the problem. So, right. And that's just it. There's no fix here. There's no, there's no root cause identification and there's no fix to the problem. There is simply, let's treat the symptom. Let's allow the problem to remain in place and let's put in some, some, some soothing balms that will make the pain for everybody less. Right. And that, I, I, I don't, I fundamentally think that's a bad idea. Right. So, uh, so I don't think this is a good idea. Like as far as I don't, I think this is kind of, it, it's actually not a bad idea. I don't think this is, I, I actually really like that Amy Klobuchar is focusing on this because this needs to be focused. We should be hearing what each candidate would do about this situation. Right. So, um, so I really think it's good that she's doing that, but I think it's a weak sauce plan. And the reason why is it focuses on the symptoms. It addresses the symptoms does nothing to determine root cause and nothing to actually identify a fix, test the fix through a pilot program, and then put the fix in at the national level, right? And you ha and, and guess what? You got to do that in four to eight years because there's no guarantee you're gonna you're even anybody's gonna carry your plan through, right? And I just feel like as a politician, you should be able to like everything I just said. That's that's super basic, right? Like that's just problem fixing 101, right? So now I'm, I'm bringing a harsh word here for Amy Klobuchar's plan. So what's the solution, right? What would I do if I was president? And what do I think? Actually, a, a better, you know, a better question is, what do I think Amy Klobuchar should do? What should be the policy plan? Well, in my opinion, the policy plan should be uh, sh should be looking at what the Democrats are already doing. So one of the things that the Democrat where where they've actually identified a fix and they're trying to apply that fix for another problem, and I think you could apply that here. So one of the, one of the things the Democrats have been really uh, very adamant about is health education in high school, specifically for the topic of when two people are together intimately, right? All right, they're, they're really, this is like a hyper-focus for them. And they're saying, hey, in every, in every state, at the national level, we want students to have correct, have accurate and honest information, right? And uh, basically, now I, I don't, I'm not, I definitely don't agree with everything that the Democrat Party at the macro level would say within that content. But I do agree that when we are educating high school students, we should be giving them accurate, honest information. And I think this is this is really key to fixing the drug abuse problem. Right? The reality is, uh, the reason why people take drugs is life is hard. Like that, that's not a mystery. I think we know that. Right? And so, like, I really, I think it's literally that simple. Like, life is very difficult, uh, and and basically intoxication makes you forget the difficulty of life for a short amount of time, and so people enter into intoxication at different levels, right? And so the, it, it's drop-dead simple, right? So that is, so that is a root, uh, the root cause, right? So if people are, are seeking to escape the pain of life through intoxication, right, then what you could do is to a real solution is to have accurate and honest information on the topic of intoxication for American high school students at the national level and teach every teacher, every national, you know, every government, uh, every, every teacher who's teaching in a state school to say, listen, here's the thing, all right? Uh, all of you are, are when you turn 18 are gonna have the opportunity, uh, actually when you turn 21 are gonna have the opportunity to uh, to use intoxicants, right? And I am talking about intoxicants at every single level: alcohol, uh, marijuana, um, prescription drug, prescription drugs used beyond their prescription, right? Um, and then opioids, right? That all that's going to be in the mix for your lives, right? And here's the issue, right? The, the accurate, honest information is that uh, alcohol is legal, right? Marijuana is decriminalized, right? And then those other two, using prescription drugs to be on prescription and using uh, opioids is absolutely illegal, right? The, you know, so ha make sure that they understand that. But, but then go one step further and say, listen, intoxication, the moment you begin intoxication, 
there is a risk of loss. Intoxication always comes with a risk of loss. As soon as you you choose to, to use intoxicants of any kind, of any of those four groups, alcohol, marijuana, prescription drugs beyond prescription use, and opioids, you are risking loss. At the lowest level, you will lose freedom. You will lose an opportunity. Like for instance, if, if you get too drunk and you oversleep, right, you might miss um, just an opportunity to go and have you know breakfast with your friends in the morning, right? With you know who are getting together for a brunch. That's a loss of opportunity. It's the very lowest loss you're gonna you're gonna suffer, right? But then if you continue to you know then once you have started using intoxicants, the odds that you will be able to control that intoxicant use through your life you have a percentage chance that you're not going to be able to control it. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to, you're not just going to lose opportunities, you're going to lose friends. The next thing you're going to lose is you're going to lose family members because maybe you've done so many things now because of your intoxication and it doesn't matter which of those products, right? It doesn't matter which of those drug categories or which of those intoxication categories you've used. You, you now could be losing family. And last, you can absolutely lose your life, right? Every single one of these has people who have died from them, right? And so, and then say frankly, so be, you know, right now you're in high school and you really need to think carefully about either uh, choosing to never use intoxicants. By the way, I'm in that boat, right? <laughs> I'm very incredibly fortunate. I've never, I've never had, I've never, I've never, used intoxicants of any kind in my entire life and I can tell you it is a good path right but the national government should be saying you should really think very carefully about bypassing intoxication altogether because by every measure it is an incredibly sound stable uh, choice right and that you know that's a fact right and I'm living proof of that uh, and there are many many others like me right so uh, and then the other it, the other thing you could say is that um, if you are using now, you should really consider uh, you know in any type of intoxicant as a high school. You you should immediately stop and tell them that f flat out. Say you should absolutely not be using this using at this at, at at this age, right? And then when you get to be twenty one, you must understand the moment you choose to use intoxicants that you are now on a percentage chance plan for loss. And that could be the opportunity, friends, family, and your very life. And this should be blanketed across every schoolroom. Every government-funded schoolroom should have accurate, honest information about, about intoxicants. And then also say that every single source of intoxicant, you know, people who are bringing you intoxicants, that they understand this percentage chance of loss, right? So, and and graded up to the very top. Now there are companies that are legally licensed by the government to bring these to you. They understand this and they right now have programs in place to assist, but they're aware of this loss. And they're okay with with the percentage chance of this loss, right? So you really need to think about that. Who who is serving you as a student, right? And who will be serving you as a person, right? And then as you go up that gradation of those different intoxicant sources, whether it's alcohol, whether it's marijuana, whether it's decriminalized marijuana, whether it's legal alcohol, decriminalized marijuana, illegal prescription drug use beyond prescription, and illegal opioids, that's, you know, basically, as you go up that chain, the people involved in supplying that material are absolutely super comfortable and incredibly incented for your percentage of loss to be increased, right? So that you will be jacked up that chain faster and faster and faster, right? And so, and you know, and, and at the lowest levels, you know, co corporations that have taken the time to sell these things legally, they are not like other normal companies, right? They, they understand and they have programs that acknowledge the danger of their product, right? And at the highest level, right? you the the bot your body itself like you are just one brick in the wall of profit you know and so like and that's accurate and honest information i really think we should begin using that right and then so that's acknowledging the root cause putting in an identifiable fix for the root cause right 
And then finally, for for this for actually those who are supplying illegal drugs in America, we should just absolutely lock down that. You know, continue to say, you know, we don't really care where where. I think we should really adopt a sound, strong platform that says we do not care where the where these illegal drugs uh, originated. That is that's completely a non-concern to the U.S. But any U.S. citizen who is in this country, who is supplying these illegal drugs to anyone, uh, your your time will be measured in decades, decades, right? And and I think that that really moves it forward. It addresses the root cause. It identifies a fix. You can put this this program in in any city or state, and then once it's proven out, you can you can put it at the national level, and you can do that within four to eight years. That's a real plan in my opinion. Whereas Amy Klobuchar, despite good intents, the reality is it's let's let's address the symptom. Let's not really look at the root cause and let's certainly not identify a fix and that's not let's not actually apply a fix at the national level within four to eight years. I think that's what every single candidate really needs to be talking about. That's my take. I know it's a complicated subject. What do you think? It's a terrible, terrible problem our country is facing. What do you think is the right way that we should be fixing this? What should Amy Klobuchar have said rather than this symptom addressing soothing balm? I'm really curious. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.